United Methodist Church. My goodness, Anatia, you look so big. Look at yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, today we have again a wonderful, another wonderful celebration for the Lord, and uh, another treat because we have a special guest a preacher today. So we will see where he's going to take us today with the prophet Malachi. But meanwhile, you know, before we travel in that time machine and to see what the prophetic word meant and how we could bring it to today, uh, we want to welcome to this service. And if you're looking for a home church, please consider us. Those watching us on television in the evening, please uh, let us know that you're watching us. Let us know and any suggestions that you have for the service or any prayers that you may have uh, that you want us to put in our prayer list, please call us, 413-323-7584. Um, and let us know how you want to be connected. You know, digital era is amazing, so you could also watch us on uh, the website and send us your messages. But George has messages for us and telling us a way of how could we truly be connected and participate in the life of all. Good morning, George. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, everybody. The very first thing you need to do is to take a pen or a pencil because George, I'm putting together the flame for today. Um, I could say the computer didn't cooperate, but I had a feeling it was my finger. Um, on the back page of your flame, you have a new address for Mary Avery and a telephone number. The area code is, says 60. Put a seven in front of it. The area code for Mary Avery in California is 760. Important things. Every year we become involved in helping the one of the groups at Belcher Town High. Uh, and um, we get a name off the Christmas tree downstairs and bring gifts in. Um, there are still a number of tags on the trees downstairs. Um, if you get them, you have to bring the gift items in next Sunday. So you have just one week. Um, but tags down there will give you the, the sex and the age of the child. Right after church today, Christian Education is sponsoring Pancake Brunch. Um, teams down there getting pancakes ready with sausage, there's fruit salad, so come down and join us for that. Um, money that's received will be going to the general budget. It's our gift to the church, um, providing our time as members of the Christian education team. Tomorrow night, there was a trustees meeting at 8, and that is not in the bulletin. That was some late-breaking news. This afternoon at 2 o'clock, church conference will be held here at the church. Um, the leader will be the pastor from Trinity United Methodist Church in Springfield. And so come and be part of our annual church conference. The next Sunday at 2 o'clock, for weeks, a choir works extremely hard. They get here in early on Sunday morning to get an extra rehearsal in, and they will be sharing with us during lessons and carols at two o'clock. It's a community event, community supports it, but I really ask that you come and support, help be the host um, to those people from the community who come and participate by being in in the pews in the sanctuary. Two o'clock, next Sunday afternoon, there's refreshments immediately following the concert. I think the pastor has something. Yes, Blue Christmas. Blue um, Christmas. Yes. Blue Christmas will be a week 
from tomorrow. Um, and it's the date is in there for coming events. And the, the time is 6.30. Um, an opportunity just to remember those that we've lost and, um, and, and, and to celebrate their lives and be able to celebrate together during that service time. I believe I have Karen Burns. There's a correction in the calendar on the flame for, uh, it has on the um, next, well, it's in the SPRC meeting in South Hadley should be on for the Saturday the 12th. This Saturday. This, this, this Saturday. right. Sorry. Yeah. Staff Parish meeting with the district superintendent this Saturday in South Hadley at 115. You carpooling? Yes. You contacted? Okay. I will. All right, thank you. Cindy Murray has an announcement about dance rehearsal, I'm sure. I apologize for not getting the changes to you. Um, the practice on Saturday the 12th will be from 2 to 3.30, and there is not a practice on Saturday the 19th. Hope Church is connected in so many ways. We have so many opportunities to, to celebrate, to worship. And so we now have a time to prepare ourselves to worship as Hope family, as God's children. So let's feel the presence of the Holy Spirit as the Spirit guides us through this worship time this morning.
Blessed the Lord of the is of God of Israel, who has come to set the chosen people free. The Lord has raised up for us a mighty Savior from the house of David. Through the holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies from the hands of all who hate us. To show mercy to our forebears and to remember the holy covenant. This was the oath that God swore to our father Abraham. Free to worship without fear, holy and righteous in the Lord's sight, all the days of our life. of Most High, for you will be, go before the Lord to prepare the way. To give, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. To shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. of all and John prepare the way for Jesus. We ask today that you prepare our hearts to sing praises to our benevolent God who also chooses us to be his messenger and prophets for this era. So with that spirit let us sing Heralds of Christ number 567. people who seek peace. We know that God has told us to turn our weapons of war into instruments that benefit all humanity. In the name of that child who was born long ago to become the prince of peace, we now light the candle of peace.
Good morning. Do any of you know what these are? Well, yeah, they're Tonka toy, toys, but they're sort of miniatures of what you've been seeing all over Belchertown these days, huh? If you've been traveling the roads here or in Springfield, Chicopee, Holyoke, there's big construction trucks everywhere. Um, I have four small ones here. Let's see. This one matches that one, and that is a back one. This one is a bucket loader. What's this one then? You were close. This one's the bulldozer. Of course, I could be wrong. And this is an earth moving truck, right? Yeah, a dump truck. Um, at times, construction is very inconvenient, especially for your parents who are trying to run you all around town and you get stuck in a traffic jam and it's like, come on, is the traffic ever going to move, right? Um, but providing safe roads is important and providing easy access to where we're going. It's like, have, um, have, how many of you have ever gone through tunnels? Have you ever gone through a tunnel? When I was little, they were really spooky. Now that I'm an adult, they're really spooky. <laughs> Some things don't change. But they blow through the mountain to make it easier to get from one place to the other. It cuts the time down on travel. And then they take curves out of really curvy roads to make a straight path to get to other places. Well, a long time ago, there was a man named John, John the Baptist, who came to tell the people about Jesus. John was preparing the people's hearts to recognize Jesus and know that he was coming to offer them love and forgiveness. It was as if he was building a road that would make it easier to get to Jesus. God gives us the tools of preparation. The Bible says, make way, make ready the way for the Lord. So we are like, okay, which one's the excavator? I forgot. Anyways, we're like excavators. Oh, thank you for saving me. It doesn't really matter. Okay, one of these is an excavator. <laughs> and um, it, it's a way of digging through the Bible so that we can learn about God's love and what he wants for us. And then John says, make straight the path. So we have the back loader, which is this, okay? And the back loader means we're loading up on prayers and helping others straighten out our focus so that we're putting all our focus on Jesus. <clears throat> yeah, you want to play with the truck? You may. Go ahead. And then, okay, can we wait a minute? Can we wait? Then John said, every valley will be filled and every mountain will be brought low. And the crooked will become straight and the rough ways smooth. So we're kind of like the earth movers. We're transporting God's love to others. What we do in Jesus' name, making the world better for other people. And then John also says, all flesh shall see God's salvation. So then we're like the bulldozer. We're offering our prayers and we're spreading them around. Spreading God's truth to the whole world so that people will come to God. So the lesson we get from this, from all this construction, is that we can make it easier for people to recognize and accept God's love. When we pray, when we study the Bible, and we try and live our lives in a way that honors God, then we are making it easier for people to come to Jesus. In that way, too, each one of you is an excavator, you're a 
backhoe, you're a backloader, and you're a bulldozer for God. You're God's construction workers, building the road, straightening out the curves, and making the roads less steep so that people can find Jesus easier and they can feel his love. So can we, so John the Baptist was also a construction worker. He was constructing an easy path to God. So can we close our eyes and say a little prayer? Dear God, we thank you for this special time of reconstructing and preparing our lives and the lives of others. Help us to prepare our church, our homes, and most especially our hearts to welcome Jesus this Christmas and every day of our lives. Amen. Now, after church, I do have one of these for each one of you. So if you see me after church, I'll give you one. But when you use them or you look at them, remember, you are God's construction worker. Okay? Amen. Amen. All right. So as God's construction workers, excavators preparing the way, let us also prepare ourselves with lots of prayers. One of those magnificent instruments, tools that God used to prepare their way. So celebrations, we have uh, Dennis, Dennis is not here today, but he had a birthday and um, on the, he's gonna have a birthday on the 11th and Jack, and both of them, I think, well, one is turning 20 and holding, and the other one 25 and holding. So, um, and then Blanchette and Alan. Al, you're going to, yeah. Al, what? 55. God bless. 55 wedding anniversary. Praise the Lord. Also, as I say uh, very often, please remember our people in prayer. Put it on your refrigerator, um, Bible, in the cabinet, bathroom, whatever, whatever you can uh, to remember those peoples in prayer. And we have a fantastic celebration today. After three months, three months, she is back. Woo, Clara! Yay! <laughs> I didn't hear my name. Um, <laughs> I'm still kind of under the ether, you know. It's like, um, thank you for all your cards, your prayers. Um, the surgery went well. I had a fantastic surgeon, and with his help and some fusion and a few screws, I'm back up and walking, and uh, I'm taking it easy, I think for the next month anyhow. That'll be four months, and I think by that time I can't stand it any longer. <laughs> so thank you, anyhow. Yeah, thank you, Clara. It's so good to have you back. Yes, yes. So uh, thank you. And uh, John is here, and she said she's trying to make it at least once a month. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Do we have anybody who else who have been sick who's back? And Mary, thank you for being back with us. So praise the Lord. Yes, good to have you with us. Um, any specific prayers besides the one that we have here? Any other? Yes. Um, our, my whole family would like to have prayers for a man who was hit on the Northampton downtown yesterday. We were actually right there. He was hit by a car. We want prayers for both the pedestrian who was crossing the street and for the driver there and just to we haven't found out anything else about it, but praying for, for God's safety with all people in their, in their vehicles and walking, and also for those who are witnesses that we can have the opportunity to remember that when we see something like that, that we have a purpose, and that purpose is to be in prayer. Amen. Yes. Also, um, very special prayers as, you know, we have lit those to candle, the candle of hope and the candle of peace. That um, as we today listen to the message, as we lift our prayers, that continue to pray for the families in San Bernardino, California. So that um, 
the Lord will be with those who have been lost and the family of, of that couple. So let us, let us keep our prayers and for all the tragedies that's going on around the world, for those victims and the family of the surviving uh, people. Let us pray for them. Cindy. Uh, prayers for my mother, Phyllis Cathan, who fell recently and is recovering at home. Um, and also prayers for everyone who's at home watching on, on TV at night. Uh, prayers for them as well. Amen. Amen. Yes. We had a scare this week. Um, my cousin, um, Max, who's 15, um, was diagnosed with hypertrophic. Um, myopathy, and um, his sister had a borderline um, MRI, who was only 17. However, a repeat visit to Mass uh, Children's um, in Boston, Max is not at risk for sudden death, and he has to make a few changes in his lifestyle, but basically, he'll be managed and treated, and Kate's going to be okay. But that calls us to think how fortunate we are that we have the best, some of the best doctors and hospitals in the world right here. And so many in the world don't have access to health care. Let us be in prayer for those people that struggle with life-changing illnesses throughout the world, some of which have no access to health care. Amen. Amen. Right. Anybody else? Paul oh, and Matt. <laughs> Emmett would like everybody to know that Tuesday is his daddy's birthday. Ah, we oui, we need to include that in the list. Yes, yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, prayers of thanksgiving. Thank you to the parents. Thank you, thank you, thank you when you bring your little ones to church. I know sometimes they giggle, they make noises, they run around. But you know, to me it is a sign of life that God keeps caring for our population for our community here that we have our children in worship so thank you their laughter their giggles their their little feet are running around bring us a signs of both of hope and of peace praise god for them thank you for our children in our midst from the little ones to our teenagers who are here and smile, and sometimes they're very shy. But thank you. Praise the Lord for each one of our children in church. Let us, let us now bow our heads in prayer. Precious and beloved God, you have heard each person lifting up their concerns prayers of thanksgivings for birthdays and anniversaries, prayer of thanksgiving for recovery from surgery, prayers of thanksgiving for being your people. We give you thanks also for the opportunity of coming to you every time that we want to anywhere. Thank you for listening to our hearts, to our worries, our concerns, our frustrations. Thank you, O oh God, because you're taking care of those who are sick, those who are in hospice, those who are just about to make major decisions in life, those who are battling depression, for those who are leading companies 
and a group of workers at work, those who are leaders around the world trying to make peace, build peace, for missionaries, for pastors, for lay workers, for Jack and Hitsumi who are preaching today at the Japanese church, for our children in our midst, for those working today downstairs preparing a breakfast, for all the things that we have not said yet, but you know them. They are in our hearts. For all of this, oh God, we give you thanks for the opportunity to bring it to you. And we pray to you, merciful God, who send your messenger, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And just say to the person sitting next to you, the peace of Christ be with you. As we prepare to sing number 209, blessed be the God of Israel. from the prophet Malachi. Again, we continue with that series of prophetic reading, and I invite you also just to listen in the message. We, you have uh, the reference there in your Bible, in your bulletin, but listen to the way that the message says is in with Peterson. Look, I am sending my messenger I send him my messenger on ahead to clear the way for me. Suddenly, out of the blue, the leader you have been looking for will enter this temple. Oh yes, the messenger of the covenant, the one you have been waiting for. Look, he is on his way. A message from the mouth of God, the angels' armies. But who will be able to stand up that coming? Who can survive his appearance? He'll be like white hot fire from the smelter furnace. He'll be like the strongest light soap of the laundry. He'll take this place as the refiner of silver, as the cleaner of very clothes. He'll scrub the Levite priest clean, 
Refine them like gold and silver until their feet for God. Feet to present offerings of righteousness. Then, only then, will Judah and Jerusalem be fit and pleasing to God as they used to be in the years long ago. So now please stand for the reading of the gospel if you are able. And we continue reading from the message. I read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the 15th year of the rule of Caesar Tiberius, it was while Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, Herod, ruler of Galilee, his brother Philip, ruler of Iteria, and Trichonitis, Lysanias, ruler of Abilene, during the chief priest of Annas and Caiaphas, John, Zachariah's son, out of the desert at the time, received a message from God. He went all through the count to the country around the Jordan River, preaching a baptism of life, changing, leading to forgiveness of sins. As described in the words of Isaiah, the prophet, he said, Thunder in the desert. Prepare God's arrival. May the road smooth and straight. Every ditch will be filled in. The detour straighten out. All the routes pave over. Everyone will be there to see the parade of God's salvation. This is the word of the Lord, and we all say, of the Christmas tree and all the lights and the ornaments oh, and the presents. Even though I noticed quite a few years ago that, that it's kind of switched from me wondering what would be under the tree and what I'd get to whether they would like what I was giving. I guess that's kind of the moment when I grew up. Still, I get so excited about the whole idea of presents and Christmas about giving and receiving. How about you? Yeah? Yeah. You still get excited? <laughs> Maybe if you're better to ask some of us, do you still remember getting excited? <laughs> uh, do you recall those times when you would peek under the tree? Maybe pick up and shake a present or two with your name on it, trying to figure out what was inside? Maybe when no one was looking, you'd secretly go out and count the number of your presents? And then the number of presents for your brother or sister. <laughs> I, I know I didn't do that. Oh boy, but I remember. I knew the presents were going to be so great for me because I'd given my wish list to my parents and I knew they loved me so much that I knew that something from that list was going to end up under that tree. I knew that the love would flow into something wonderful and they would manage to give me at least some of what I wanted. That's why I made a list. I don't know about you, but that's why I made a list. 
a list with lots of things on it so they had a good selection to choose from. Now in the reading from Malachi, can't you just feel that same anticipation? Imagine yourself back then when you heard this. Suddenly, out of the blue, the leader you've been looking for will enter his temple. Yes, the messenger of the covenant, the one you've been waiting for. Look, look, he's on his way. And then, who will be able to stand up to that coming? I really like this passage. He'll be like white hot fire from the smelter's furnace. He'll be like the strongest lye soap at the laundry. I could just imagine the Israelites, couldn't you? Oh boy, we are finally going to get the successor to David. Yes, sir, the Messiah is coming and it's going to be so good for us. He's going to come and cleanse this land of all the bad people. Why, he'll wash the land clean of our enemies. That was the lie soap, I think. He's going to lead an army for sure. He'll be like David, a king. Yes, we are finally going to get everything we want because God has chosen us and God loves us. Oh, I remember when Christmas came and I ran into the living room with my brother and sister. Our parents were there. My dad had his hot coffee because he always had to have his coffee before we were allowed to go in. And then one by one, he tore open the presents. Yes! the baseball mitt I asked for. There's the new game. Oh, the model airplane that I really wanted. Yes, yes, I was so excited. And I watched my brother open his and my sister, and I secretly weighed, you know, whether they really got more than I did or whether the value was more. It didn't matter, it didn't matter. It really didn't matter. I got what I wanted. This is so great because I really got everything that I had on my list that I really wanted. And then today in Luke, we have the canticle of Zacharias. When Elizabeth delivers John the Baptist, Zacharias knew that their son had a special mission. He is sending us a mighty savior from the royal line of his servant David, just as he promised through his holy prophets long ago to save us from our enemies, from all who hate us. Oh, the anticipation it was almost here. Yes, they must have said, finally, we are going to get exactly what we wanted. Everything will be paradise. All our enemies will be vanquished. Listen to those words. Save us from our enemies and from all who hate us. And he'll even be from David's line. This is great. We'll finally have our rightful place as God's children. Everything we always wanted. Yes! 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 <laughs> Still, under that tree was that one remaining present. The one from my grandmother. We called her Graham. You know the present I'm talking about. That present. All of us always made the one from Graham the absolute last present we opened. Mom and Dad were there with their, you will react with joy when you open that <laughs> present from Graham book. <laughs> that present that smelled like her when you opened it, even though she lived more than a thousand miles away. So we tore the paper so slowly you could almost hear each fiber breaking. The paper came off and you saw the box and it was a flat box. So you knew it wasn't a toy, it wasn't going to be a game, it wasn't a baseball mitt at all. And my grand lived alone back in Pittsburgh and she would come every year for a month or so in the spring. And we loved our grand. And surely she loved us with all of her heart, and she always sent us a present without fail. So I opened the box inside, and this year it was a, what? It was a blanket. <laughs> Mom, it's a blanket. No, Ricky, that's what you called me. It's an afghan. 
and Graham made it for you with their own hands, and you know she has arthritis, and I'm sure you will like it. <laughs> so I looked at my brother and my sister. Now my brother was older, and he already knew the drill, so he feigned looking happy. And I tried not to look too disappointed. I mean, I really tried. And now think again about the Israelites as we revisit that canticle, that chant from the Father. I'm thinking they must have been trying to put this all together as well. It's not right. No, 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 wait. It's not right. It can't be right. It's not what we've been asking for. You will tell his people how to find salvation through forgiveness of their sins. All this will be because the mercy of God is very tender. And heaven's dawn is about to break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and death's shadow and guide us to the path of peace. What's all this about forgiveness and sins and light and peace? Where are the armies to vanquish our foes? And then years later in the desert, John the Baptist was foretelling the coming of our Lord using the words of the prophet Isaiah. And we heard, make the road straight. Every ditch will be filled in. Every bump will be smoothed out, the detour straightened out, all the ruts paved over. Everyone will be there to see the parade of God's salvation. No, 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 that's not what we wanted. That's not the successor to David at all. Not a leader of armies. What about, what's this about us preparing for God's arrival? God's supposed to send us a leader to set us free from our enemies. Parade of God's salvation? We don't want a parade. We want our place in the world. Where's the smiting of our enemies? There must have been a lot of confusion. Everyone thought they knew what the Messiah would be. He'd be a leader of armies. He'd vanquish all our foes. But when we look and we take off the filter of our own desires, what we see in reality is that Jesus came to us exactly as the prophets really said. The prophets never said he would come in anger or vengeance. Malachi talked about the Messiah scrubbing us clean to be fit for God. The canticle of Zechariah said clearly by making us holy and acceptable, ready to stand in his presence forever. Isaiah's prophetic voice through John the Baptist told us the present God was giving would change everything. But he never said it was exactly what they wanted. The prophets told us that God was sending us someone, someone that would change everything in the world. John said he had to be ready to accept the gift. We are the ones preparing to receive God's <clears throat> ultimate presence. His message of never-ending love and grace. No, no, this wasn't at all what had been put on the Israelites' wish list. And so the years passed for me from Christmas to Christmas, and when I was just a little older now, called Rick instead of Ricky, <laughs> my gram passed away. My mom and dad said that there wasn't enough money for them to fly me back and all of us for the funeral back east. So she took my oldest brother, Bill. My dad was working on a project in California and my sister and I were not old enough to be left alone all week. So my parents left my sister and I in the care of her best friend, Anita. Anita, who was always very close to our family, was happy to watch over us for a week. And sometimes, during that week, one night, I remember myself crying quietly in my bedroom. I think that's when Graham's death actually hit me. Anita was sitting out in the family room, and she must have heard me, so she came in. She sat on the edge of my bed with me, and she tried to hold and comfort me as a, any mom would, but I was a young boy by then, and I, I really didn't want any of that. And she wasn't really my mom. 
But Anita was a mom, too. And somehow she knew what to do. So she went to my closet. And she grabbed a blanket. An afghan. That afghan. And she wrapped me in it. And it still smelled like my granny. And despite my objections, it was warm and comforting. And it felt almost like my Graham's loving arms once again surrounding me. I felt all that love she admitted into that blanket so many years ago. It warmed me. And it brought me back to her. Who knew that was in that box? That box that wasn't at all on my Christmas list. Like the Israelites waiting for their Savior. You know that old Afghan under the tree so long ago? It wasn't at all what I wanted. God knew. God knew it was exactly what I needed. Listen for a moment to this paraphrase of Christina Robinson. Rossetti's wonderful poem. Love came down at Christmas. Love all lovely, love divine. Love was born at Christmas, stars and angels, and the prophets before them gave the sign. Merry Christmas. I hope you all get everything you really need. Amen. What a gift. What a gift. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us now be prepared for our offerings.
this prayer, read it with me. Gracious and giving God, we once again prepare for the birth of your Son. Through the voices of prophets and preachers, you have been heard in the driest deserts and the steepest valleys. Unfold our hearts and open our minds, so that we may hear the salvation story anew. Even this money is the worshipful gesture of our unending hallelujahs to you. We dedicate this offering to your kingdom work. Amen. Please be seated as we prepare the table for you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Live up your hearts. Let us offer our thanks to God. It is right to give God our thanks and praise. It is right to give you our thanks and praise of God. We live all things visible and invisible. We reveal your glory in the wonders of your creation and in the way you love it people, male and female, in your image, and entrusted them with the ongoing task of revealing the signs of your glory and love in the world. When they failed and turned from your ways, you did not abandon them, but spoke to them through the prophets about the one to come, who would bring healing and peace, justice and righteousness to the people. The day surely came when those prophetic words came to pass, and you broke into our history in the person of Jesus Christ, fulfillment of all your promises. And so, with all the company of heaven and earth, we praise your holy name, singing, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Every time you take it, remember me. After they were all satisfied, then Jesus took the cup. He lifted and he blessed, and he said, This is the cup of a new covenant, my love given for you. Every time, every time you taste it, do it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and we drink the cup, we proclaim the Lord's grace until he comes again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us, gather here, 
O oh God, and open these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us the life of Christ, and that we may make that life visible through serving as he served and loving as he loved. This we pray in the name of Jesus, and we sing, Amen. that Christ is in our midst. We pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Because I is a kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you. Faith, the body of Christ broken for you. Happy, the body of Christ like Malachi, bringing a message of hope to those that you encounter in your way. Amen.
Prepare the way for the coming of the Lord with the message of peace. Amen. Continue, continue sharing Christ's love to whoever comes to you seeking for peace. Amen. Would the communion steward please come forward? May the Lord bless you and keep you. And as you share this wonderful gift to those who are at home or a nursing home or at the hospital, let them be filled with grace and love. Be you the messengers of Christ today and every time that you bring this extended table to those who cannot be here today. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. Our last hymn is Soon, Very Soon.
king, the king of heaven in the face of every person that we gonna encounter in our way in the blankets that grandmothers give us as a gift in the embracing of God's love. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his, shine, his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift off his countenance upon you and give you peace. May the Lord give you and the whole world this Christmas precisely what we need. Amen. Amen. We go in peace. Thank you.